And we're live with another podcast, Mike here with Jeff. Again, <laughs> uh, a lot to talk about today. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. This has been quite an eventful uh, week since we've last been on air. I know. <laughs> and, um, well... It's been a very busy week. It really has been. Week, flyers-wise and everything. Yeah, with there's... The with the leaks, what, game, first game starting on Wednesday? Two days. Yeah, yeah got two days between the yep. defending Stanley Cup champions, today Washington was, Capitals. Yeah. And today that kind sounds of very weird saying. Waiver kind of yes. deadline. Yes, and before. the Boston Bruins. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, so as you just mentioned, Mike, it is uh, today is the last day for waiver claims. Yes. And... Uh, for clubs to place players on waivers and still have uh, them clear ahead of tomorrow's 5 p.m. deadline. Uh, you also have a possible suspension yeah. we'll get into in just a little bit. Um, a new captain yep. for an original six team. Mm-hmm. Uh, a very minor trade yeah. we can you know, just mention. And, of course, a lot to do with the Flyers, including two... Yep. Not one, but two players players being put on waivers. And then we'll end it out with a uh, prediction of how we think things will go. Yep, absolutely. So let's go with the the big one right here, the suspension possibly for Tom Wilson. Yeah, you heard that right. There's already a chance of Tom Wilson being suspended. I've never heard of that before. No, neither have I. Not at all. He's such Um, a good player. Of course. And, I mean, he did deserve that contract. I know, right? But... um, I'm reading Angel on NBC Sports article, and the first sentence says, oh boy, here we go again. Yeah. And oh boy is right. So if you look at the hit, it's... Well, here, here's what happened. Tom Wilson was ejected from Sunday's game between the Washington Capitals and the St. Louis Blues in the second period for checking to the head, that's what the, yes. the referees call the penalty, to... St. Louis Blues forward Oscar Sundquist. Mm-hmm. The principal point of contact appears to be Sundquist's head. Uh, they show many angles uh, from the hit. Uh, Sunquist did need to get help off the yeah. ice and has n- and did not return to the game. Mm-hmm. The Blues were leading one nothing prior to the hit. Um, the Caps should probably just sit Wilson anytime they're playing the Blues in the preseason. <laughs> the guy said, but Wilson was suspended not probably. once but twice last year in the preseason for mm-hmm. two separate hits on Blues players. Yes, he first received a two game uh, ban for a late hit on Robert Thomas, and then was suspended the first. Four games of the regular season after um, boarding Sammy Blaze in the Washington's final preseason game last year. Ironic. Final preseason game last year, final preseason yeah. game this year. It's like a new trend for him. Um, and everyone, it has to be a big amount of games. This you can't give him another like two game suspension. Here's the thing, like though. This. this could be Wilson's fourth suspension in just over a year, yeah. with his third coming on May 2nd against the Penguins in the playoffs. Um, uh, the hit was particularly nasty. Uh, the recipient was Zach Aston Reese, who su- uh, suffered yeah. a concussion and a broken jaw as a result. Mm-hmm. So here's the funny thing, though. Also, if you look at the hit again, like Sunquist doesn't see him coming. Right, He's it's a completely blindside yeah. hit. It, it's. He it's very clearly, frustrating. It looks like he's clearly going for the head, nothing else. Right. Um. So here's the thing that made me laugh. Someone tweeted at uh, Chris Johnston for, I want to say, TSN. The football player? <laughs> the running back from Tennessee? No. Oh. Nice try, though. Oh. Um, hockey, uh, sorry, Hockey Night in Canada um, for Sportsnet. That's what I'm thinking of. Canada. But he said Tom Wilson got a sizable raise over the summer, which is true, and he is a c- is considered a repeat offender. As a result, he'll forfeit $63,008.00. And twelve cents in salary for each game he's suspended here. Okay, yeah. so with that new yeah for each game he's suspended higher. for, that's nothing. No. Sure, you know, depending on the player and your salary, that could be a good amount. So, like, let, let's say hypothetically, you're you're a rookie mm-hmm. player, or or just your your rookie contract days where the most uh player uh, most rookies typically get unless you're like a R- Rasmus Dahlin type player. Yeah. Uh the most you would typically see a rookie getting is seven hundred fifty thousand per year. Mm-hmm. So already right there, uh let's say you get suspended for five games, that's almost that that's a good chunk of your 
yeah, you know, co- uh, salary uh, part of your contract in just your first year in you know the NHL. But here's the thing for Wilson: you got a huge, you know, contract extension during the all season, which I, a lot of people, including us, probably find a little interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, but sixty three grand is, uh, although it's you know per game, yeah, it doesn't matter. That's mm-hmm. essentially nothing. To them, it's basically no. a quarter to these players, well, no, especially also, for a player like Wilson who's getting yeah. paid that much. And if you look at the contract that he signed this off season, yes. And uh, do you have the contract details? Six years, thirty-one million. Yeah, so sixty-three grand Five, per game is yeah. nothing compared to what he Five just million a year. Yeah, that, that's literally nothing. So, for me personally, I think that players should forfeit a minimum of one million dollars. And it doesn't matter if it's per game or, or or whatever. It has to at least be. Are you saying with someone who has a prior like anybody history? Well, or like uh, any, uh, uh, or like maybe, any hits maybe, in the head? maybe. Um, a repeated offender, obviously, depending on how many times. I think if it's more than like two, three times, right. Start with five. Mm -hmm. Hit him where it hurts. Make it actually matter because the league is trying to eliminate these hits, or so they say, because there's no such thing as a goon player or the enforcer role Mm -hmm. unless you're Tom Wilson or, you know, um, uh, Ryan Reeves uh, and, you know, a few other players Mm -hmm. out there in the league. The few that are still around. Exactly. And the game has changed completely. Mm Mm-hmm. Even when it was like what yeah. five years ago, so yep. from the there's no room for this type mm-hmm. of behavior on the ice. It's yeah. it's disgusting uh, how the league continues to let Wilson play like this. Mm-hmm. Not only that, but the actual Department of Player Safety, they're they're just uh, <laughs> they frustrate me because right. uh, uh, like I just mentioned, this is going to uh, he, he was suspended like, four times. Mm-hmm. If not at least three times, in almost a year. And good is like two years ago he was having the same thing. He had like what like three suspensions in a year. If he had one more, he would have had like a bunch of games yes. or whatever. Yeah. And then it happened last season. Then he had what sat out like eight games or something. Ten. Ten. Yeah. He's only sat out like what two or so every time he's about right. Defended yeah. Or done it in the preseason. In the yeah. preseason. Yeah. Th- there's no need for that. That's like the Matt Martin hit on Travis Sanheim. There's no need for it. No. I mean, it's not the same thing as... Right, no, I agree, but still, there's no need for that type of play. But anyway, um, for me personally, for a hit like this uh, by Wilson, because he's a repeated offender... Not even that. He didn't have to be in the play. That too. He was already defended. Well, not only that, but there's that. That's the second point. A third point is Sunquist did not return to the game. He got hurt. Yeah. I would start start with at least an 8 to 10 game suspension. Mm Mm-hmm. What do you think? Is that too harsh, or is that in the ballpark? No. I mean, he is getting an in-person interview, or yeah, in-person, in-person um, meeting. Today, yes, which means it's got to be a couple of games. Or At least it, it deserves to be, because that's usually what how it goes when you're in that's person. Right. You uh, get a lot more than if it's over the phone. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> yeah, so that that's like the biggest mm-hmm. thing for the league. Um. Here's a complete list of all the players on waivers. Uh, Curtis McElhaney and Calvin Picard from Toronto. Ryan Murphy from Minnesota. Tom Kunakle from the Islanders. Daniel Carr. Curtis McKenzie from the Vegas Golden Knights. uh, Remy Ellie. Joel Hanley. Justin Dowling from Dallas. David uh, Wersowski. And Mark Alt, former flyer Mark Alt from the Colorado Avalanche. <clears throat> Excuse me, Alexander Broadhurst, Rocco, uh, and um, sorry, Broadhurst from Columbus, Rocco Grimaldi from Nashville. Here's an interesting one for you: Sam Gagne from Vancouver and Darren Archibald. So it would be interesting to see if Gagne goes anywhere. Right. Uh, Aaron Ness, Antoine uh, Bebo from San Jose. Sorry, uh, Ness was from Washington. Trevor Murphy from Arizona. Chris Thorburn from St. Louis, and as well from the Blues, Dmitry Yaskin. Another interesting name. Yeah. So two names immediately stick out to me. Oh, and of course, for the Flyers, yeah. Dale Weiss, Dale Weiss and, and Taylor Lear. Yeah. Not one, but two names yeah. for the Flyers. <clears throat> so what do you think about Gagne and Yaskin right away? What are your initial thoughts? Um, 
I know Yaskin's I mean, a right winger, yeah. but if your team needs depth, I think he's only 25 years old. Yeah. I think you could really use him at least on your third line. The, easily your fourth, but True, third line could. for sure. Um, if someone's missing a winger, yes. they want like a good third uh, winger. Even Daniel Carr is a solid player yeah. to pick up. Uh, where was for it? Gagne, he's kind of been not struggling, but he's been finding it harder and harder to find teams. Right, I agree. the past couple of years, he's been on the fourth line, but when he first came in like the league, he was supposed to be one of the top six guys. Yeah, because he but was... Now he's been playing as like a fourth line player, right. and he's not really a fourth line center. No. Um, but I think it wouldn't hurt to even take a look at him for mm-hmm. a little bit. He does have two years on his contract now, but I think it would be something to consider. Yeah. Um. He's two years on his current deal, which carries an average of uh, 3.15 mil. Mm-hmm. And we'll get to the beer and uh, yes. we swan in a little bit. Um, but. Some other news around the league. Um, the St. Louis Blues have acquired Jake Jarrah back from the Edmonton Oilers in exchange for a conditional sixth-round pick in 2020. So a small really trade a there. small trade. Yeah. <laughs> You're not kidding on that one. Pick. Yep. Uh, and then, other relatively big news, Shea Weber becomes the 30th captain in Montreal Canadiens history. Paul Byron and Brendan Gallagher will serve nice. as alternate captains. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense for Weber. Yeah, I agree with Weber. Byron is a little surprising to me. Yeah. Gallagher, not so much. Mm-hmm. They had that fill someone out after trading away Pacioretty, so. Yeah, and also Galchenyuk. True. Um, I would even consider, well, he's suspended, but uh, possibly Max Domi as a assistant. Yeah, I could see it, but yeah, they seem settled. Not the best timing. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, his thing is a lot different from the Wilson hit. His right. His was just an anchor player, or just his like uh, hit at the moment kind of thing. Right, I agree. But that'll happen and everything. Yeah. Um, also around the uh, NHL today in Flyers uh, yep. and Nashville and everything. Scott Hartnell announced his retirement today. Yep. Uh, yes. Hartnell down no more. Yes. But he was uh, always an entertaining player yeah. and very productive. But Who can forget the 2012? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <in> Pittsburgh. <laughs> that was great. A lot of great memories of Scott Hartnell. The Yager, Drew, and Hartnell line that was, was a watch. amazing line for the uh, Hartnell gave Flyers. Hartnell was the person that set off the one timer from Drew. Yep, he started it, then went to Shen and now Couturier. Yeah, well, it might change this year. I don't know. If Possible, you never know. The power play, but if it stays from what it is last year, Couturier. Yeah, uh, another retirement actually. Radim Verbata uh, also announced his retirement from the NHL today. He was selected 212th overall in 1999. Only three wow. players from that draft class have played more games and scored more points. Wow. So congratulations to him there on a, also another um, what terrific what, season. What's your favorite Scott Hartnell memory? <laughs> I know there's a lot to choose from. Oh, man. Um... I, I get that. honestly, the goal in overtime against the Penguins with point two seconds left. Mm-hmm. That that's, that's a great goal. Yeah, it is. Great memory and mm-hmm. uh, yeah. He was always a good guy to have around and everything. Right, especially one that were Simmons too, because he had two dads. <laughs> that's that that stepped up for you. Yeah. Now I just have Simmons. Yeah. And it's still up in the air what happens with him, but. Those type of pl- players like Hartnell are diminishing. Yeah, I agree. Like you still have those power forward type players, but not as much. Not as there definitely, used to be. definitely not as much. Um, it's, so, uh, it's become more of like a skills kind of. Yeah, thing. you I can mean, argue James Van Reems like is in a way a power forward. Yeah, I I, I could you could sure. easily make the argument. Um, again, there's not that many. Out there's, there a, there's still some in the league. It's more than the goons or whatever that are still around, but they're still like a good yeah. amount, but they're diminishing from what there was. Um, apparently, uh, just because just I'm seeing this now from Bob McKenzie, uh, Connor Carrick got claimed by the Dallas Stars. Bobby Margarita. <laughs> so, 
That is certainly something. Um, round of uh, yeah. conditional pick in 2019. Oh, I lied. They, uh, it sounds like they traded him. He plays 50 games. Yep. Well, there you go. Uh, Carrick has to play 50 games, you said? Yeah. If he <coughs> plays 50 Excuse games. Me. I can see it. This is coming from Bob McKenzie. Yep. So now on to the Flyers, the biggest thing there. <laughs> your it, it's it's well one a lot of things kind of going on at the moment with yeah the Flyers. but uh well <laughs> two things with your Le- yeah right <laughs> so, uh two things with your Letera. one he makes she the had, team which is a little yeah. surprising a be- little but really the reason why it's surprising is because um recently uh, early last early wednesday morning uh, of last week uh came out a Finnish news service um, broke out. Uh, the news broke out that Yori Letera was a suspect in a cocaine ring, and that police had raided his cottage this summer. But Letera was not there at the time, according to the report. There are seven people in jail in Finland, and a total twenty-two suspects regarding two kilos of cocaine that have spread around the city of Tampere since January 2017. The NHL told the Courier Post it would start an investigation in the matter, and the Flyers are awaiting word mm-hmm. from the authorities in the NHL and in Finland before making any comment. Right. Well, Tara said, I was asked by the temporary police that I can't say anything about this matter. I'm going I'm going to respect that. Mm-hmm. So, uh, this is interesting. He, but He has denied it, so I'm... Not he gonna, has denied it because... I'm not uh, going to place it until it's actually, like... Proven or anything. Right, exactly. So, you know, proven... And proven to a guilty. Innocent until... Yeah, uh, proven gu- yeah. yeah, proven guilty. Yes. <laughs> Words. Words. Um, mouth. But, any <laughs> but anyway, uh, he, he did mention that basically at the end of the day, you'll see that I've done nothing wrong here. Yeah. It's just an interesting story uh, yeah, that is. came out. Mm-hmm. You can make what you will with it, yeah. but I mean that's why we, people are probably thinking because right after it happened, he missed like two days straight of yeah because like practice you know practice wasn't like, in a preseason game, so people were thinking, well, he might be the guy that's guy that's getting cut. Yeah. So and then uh, which they wouldn't have minded because there's only a year left in his contract, so they wouldn't right. Have just it, so it certainly would have helped. But then he played in the game in Boston. That's right. He even picked up an assist. Yep. Yeah, he didn't look that terrible. Right. He looked okay. Which probably... And the Corbin Knight injury as well. Yeah, and that certainly hurt the um, the Flyers. Because mm-hmm. it seemed like he was probably going to be the fourth line center. Right. Because what the center thing that was coming in the training camp was there was a roster spot for it. Obviously, Frost was there, Voboyov, mm-hmm. Wheel, Le- uh, Latera, and uh, Lawton. But yeah. Wheel didn't really pan out. Voboyov pretty much took hold of the third-line center spot, which opened yeah. up the fourth-line center spot, but you're not going to want to put Wheel on the fourth-line center, or on the fourth right. line, which then made it between Corbin Knight, Latera, and uh, Lawton, and Lawton's been kind of used on the wing lately. Wing so more, which I think it's good. Uh um, it does help Scott Lawton. Sure. But I, I, part of me, I, I don't know, part of me feels like he should be on the third line. Yeah, but if you go with the third line of... Well, the, well like, let's take a look at what the third line would be. It what would could be, it be? It could be Mikhail Vorobiev, who I think at this point has locked up yeah. a spot for sure. Oscar Lindblom and Oscar Lindblom and Wade and Simmons, Yes. But now you get to the fourth. Yeah, actually, now now that I'm, th- we're talking about the line now. Or if you go off what happened, what was last night and the game or the, the Thursday, yeah, or the Rangers game, yeah, that was Thursday. Um, they put JVR on the third line with Voboyov. Yes, because I w- they split up the lines at one point. I mean, point. they weren't playing that well to begin with, right? So they kind of yeah, were just trying to get some spark or whatever. Yeah, uh, but. That's that's another thing that they could do is yeah, put and then they put Lemblum back with uh, Patrick yep. and uh, Forcheck. Right, so that's always an option, but I think it's going to be the top six that we've kind of been 
thinking for a while. Mm. And if it's that, then your fourth line is probably going to be what? Like Taro, Raffle, and uh, Lawton. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if Wheel's playing. He might be. He might be in the press box. He might be in the press box. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing though. Unless you don't want him on the fourth line, but you put him on the fourth line. But mm. For who? Wheel? No, you have Laterra in the press yeah. box, and you have Lawton take the center or wheel. I mean, hey, I, I honestly would, another, I would prefer Lawton, option, but we, uh, Lawton, wheel, and then Raffle. Raffle, thank you. I can think of it. Uh, on the fourth line and just sit Laterra. That, that's what I would think personally. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. I don't know, we'll go from there. But obviously the final cuts were made too, and obviously Mark Freeman didn't make it. Yes. Myers was sent down again. Yep. Carter Hart got sent down, so though yes, officially that, uh, uh, Anthony Stolarz will be the backup for now. Yeah. But you were mentioning to me before we started podcasting, yeah. it sounds like Michael Neuvert was he skating. He was skating around either yesterday or like the day before. Okay. And that might have something to do with Hart getting sent down, which means he's probably closer than people are thinking, even yeah. though there's been no timetable. Yeah. So if that's the case, they probably didn't want Hart for just a couple games. Right. They'd rather have him start. That makes since sense. Since you don't have Lion, you might as well put him in the yeah, Valley and he'll get a couple starts. Which is weird if you look at the Phantom schedule because they play on Saturday and then they don't play again until Friday, the next Friday. That's true. <laughs> it's really weird. But it's exciting to see now. Hockey's back. It really is just only a few days away. But what do you think of like the fire, the like last couple of cuts and everything? All right. So taking a look at the last couple of cuts, like especially what happened today, because it's weird that it was they put both right Lear and Weiss well that kind of makes the, oh boy. Ugh. There goes my mic. Right in the face. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Down for the count. Uh, <laughs> part of me wishes we were recording this on, yeah. on the video camera here because that way you could see me just so much. Uh. And make a gift out of it. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> you got to be careful of the mic or now. Jeff. Yeah. However you say that word. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it is quite, in, and I, I'm like so like, Trying to be trying to be so careful mm -hmm. on the mic right now. I'm like trying to back off. Right. Uh, back but anyway, <laughs> trying to get back to where we were talking yeah, about. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, no, it's just interesting how both because mm -hmm. and Lear got put on waivers. Because mm -hmm. I thought honestly, the way things were looking, I did I have a feeling that Weiss or Latere will get put on waivers and not Lear. Right. Because if it, yeah. But. <sighs> Because I'm assuming uh, this is so this tough. Because this is very came out tough. That they were uh, still up in the air what they wanted to make the move of. Now, what the yeah. move probably was was whether they wanted to put both on waivers or just the one. Because I'm assuming they already kind of had a feeling that they wanted Latera to make the team, and then it was kind of yeah up in the air of what they wanted to do with the air and Weiss. And they probably don't want to lose Weiss, but there's a probably good chance he might get claimed. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with Weiss getting claimed. Not Weiss, I mean... Uh, no, Lear. Lear. Yeah, I prefer not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, Hart, uh, again, kind of going back to him getting sent down, I'm kind of okay with him getting sent yeah. down. Because I, I would have been a little surprised, but I mean, my worry is that he wouldn't have gotten a whole lot of playing my time. My only guess is the guys we mentioned earlier... They were just putting on waivers and everything. Teams go after, and we all kind of earlier kind of falls. Right, which is probably why they waited for this because more people would be put on waivers. Where if he was put there yesterday, he might have been claimed. Right. Yeah. Because um, he is a good player. He still has. He scored in Boston. That's true. He opened up the scoring, and the four and the overtime winner. No, not overtime winner. No. Game and our win, yeah, and our win. Okay. Ugh. I got it confused with the Eagles game last night. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, do but you want it's up in the air with how you or what happens now? Because right, either they 
one of them's gonna get well, could possibly get. Claimed. I think I hope it's there's a chance that Weiss could get Weiss, claimed. I honestly think that Weiss might get claimed. I hope so. I, hope. I don't know if it's entirely gonna happen, but I do have a small, like a the tiny smallest gut feeling that Weiss will get claimed. Yeah. By who? No idea. You if never know. He might make a return to Montreal. Like, because he here's the ironic thing is, he actually did good there. Yeah. And I'm being dead serious. Like, he was one of their and better he has, players. He hasn't had a great camp, and he hasn't had a terrible camp either. Right. He's been so, and so. And there's a team that's kind of like what the Penguins did with getting uh, Reeves. Yeah. Kind of someone on the fourth line that can. Um, I mean, Re- Fleer, mm-hmm. or Reeves isn't like that. Yeah. He's still kind of gritty, but he's not as gritty as like someone like. We split. You could still be. I love the fact you're saying gritty. I love gritty. Man. Right. Hey, guess what? I tweeted this out uh, the uh, on Friday morning, but so do I. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I said, I, I said, uh, you know, basically like uh, whoever's you know seeing this, I, I have news. <clears throat> I'm now on the. Uh, I'm now on board with the gritty train. <laughs> mm-hmm. We but need to bring gritty in here. Hey, gritty. <laughs> Watch him sleep. Popping, that'd be awesome. That'd be great. Um, he did meet the Fanac though the other night, which is really yeah, sick. Yeah, saw that. Um, but anyway, but going back to Dale Weiss, his best year in Montreal was. Th- uh, oh, I'm looking at penalty minutes. Mm-hmm. I was like, dang, he had 34 points. Oh, oh my god, he had 42 in Vancouver. Uh, it was 29 points in 2014, 2015. 10 goals, 19 assists. He was uh, the following year. He had 26 points in 56 games. I mean, but then you know he for still has two years, so that I don't know if that right deters anyone from going after him. But right, um, but then it was interesting. He did well in 2013-14 playoffs. He had seven points in sixteen games. Right. Well, the playoffs are weird, and that right. those kind of players kind of somehow find a way. Yeah, like Dan Carcello in 2010, Ryan Reeves yeah. last year. Yeah. Tom and Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> Making Tom Wilson hits. So that's not surprising. Um, no, he's actually like producing and scoring goals. It was weird. Oh, that that part. Yeah, sorry. I, I'm yeah, still yeah. distracted by the fact that uh, he's been making these horrible hits still. Yeah. Um, but anyway, do you think it's time to go could, well, could, uh, to talk about the season p- preview? Um, or not yet? What do you think? Yeah, we could. Okay. Unless so a little... Sorry, go ahead. Or we could talk about defense a little bit too, because that was finalized too. With That's true. Freeman going down. Yeah, free Mark Freeman got sent down. So, yeah, no. Let's talk about defense first. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. I think Fo- the way Fallen's Fallen Fallen? been playing, he he deserves to be the seventh defenseman. He does, but it seems like Haxel really likes him. I don't know. Well, here and here's an interesting thing. Like so this is going to be great content here. So because uh, last. So uh, last week uh, it was on Thursday for the Flyers Rangers preseason game. I ended up, <laughs> I ended up getting to the game. Uh, y- you went to the game, right? No, I didn't. Oh, you didn't. Oh. There's an insurance concert. There been a lot of traffic. Oh my gosh, Whitmer! I still went to the you Flyers were, you game. Were, you were covering it. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, so I still watched it. <laughs> I'm still a fan. Did, did you see? Uh, th- uh, okay, so no wonder why you didn't. Real? Uh, uh, did you get my text though about the? Mm-hmm. Out there goes your mic. But he got <laughs> it goes up and then special it effects. It yeah. spins now. Um, but you got my text about the popcorn. Oh yeah, wait, we're talking about gritty again. Yeah. Oh, I thought we were talking about defense. Well, we, we were, but <laughs> <laughs> sorry, but um, but anyway, n- now going back to defense. Okay. because uh, <laughs> it's pretty much if you, it seems. Cause but no, because like just all overall throughout preseason, Fallen has not looked good. No, and especially in the Boston the game, he made another terrible turnover that almost led to a goal. But Elliot made an incredible save. He made a few bad plays in the Ranger game. He's, I think he's on. Part of me honestly feels like I would almost rather have Mark Freeman on the roster than Fallen. Right. Um, an interesting thing that when I did get to the game on Thursday, I was in the press box and I bumped to, into Mark Howe and I asked him about the Flyers' defense. Right. Defense. defense. He's not the biggest fan of Fallen. He no. said, you're basically getting the same player you are now as you did like five years well, ago. Yeah. He's 27, so you have the player where he's going to be. 
He's 27 right now? Yeah, he's 27. But, you know, he said you're getting the same player exactly. like you, you would five years ago, which is mm-hmm. crazy, you know. Um, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, but if you go off the past, because Ghost and Provorov didn't play in Boston, but the previous couple preseason games, Ghost was with Provorov. So yes. That pretty much I think the that line should be, be together. The, yeah, that, the, that or sorry, the pairing, thank you. That's going to be together. They, now they the deserve question to be. then becomes, because... McDonald hasn't looked great either, even though he's You can cut him some slack. Yeah, he's returning from injury earlier from his injury, but still that turnover in New York and he hadn't didn't play. He played better in Boston, but still not great. And the second part, the second pairing is going to be a toss up because yeah, is it because what I'm assuming Sandheim's going to be in the third pair because that's how they used him last year. Yeah. Which probably means he'll probably be with what? Haig? Maybe Gudis? But if Fulton in place, it'll probably be what it was on Sunday. Sandheim, Fulton, and right. Haig, and, or Haig McDonald, or Gudis and McDonald. Because Haig has a, none of the defensemen other than like the top pair of Pro Round Ghosts had really had a great camp. Like, Sandheim was hurt, and he's just coming back, but I'll cut him some slack. There. Yeah. But Follin, Gudis, uh, McDonald, even Friedman didn't really have that great of a preseason either, or camp either. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's just the defense, they need a little help. Mm-hmm. They need some sort if it of was push. Yeah, if it was up to me... If I was doing the defense, I would put Goodis with Sanheim, make that your second pair. Yeah. And then, I guess, Haig McDonald, and have full on your seventh. I, or I, I think at this point, I would definitely or have. My opinion, or what yeah, I would go like ahead. to do, even though Myers didn't really have a standout, like, perfect camp. I'd put Sandheim with Myers and yeah. have Gudis with McDonald. Or Gudis with Hager, I don't know. But that's probably going to have to wait for a while. And if we want to turn that over to... Uh, or how would you think the defense should... What I, 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 need a, I need to look at like na- the numbers written down. Cause, hold on, let me, let me get a... Uh, I'm going to do uh, a uh, daily face-off here. <coughs> so, the defense pairings, As I think, because uh, they need to update their website, because yeah. <laughs> they still have Nicholas Al- Kibel up there. Uh, I think it's Provrov and Gossa Spare. Yeah. <sighs> See, this is I think it's Sanaheim and Gudis, and then Mac yeah. and Haig. Mm-hmm. That's just how it's going to go. What I would like to see, because well, uh, it's like the end of last season, they might have Haig sit, which does not make sense. He does not deserve to sit, right? Especially for someone like Fulon. Mm-hmm. Haig the only deserves thing to play. With Fulon is right-handed defenseman. For some reason, they want to have a good amount of right-handed and left-handed right. defenseman. Here, here's my other thing. I did want to make a comment about this because Rakitic is a right-handed defenseman. Mm-hmm. Sandheim's a lefty. Mm-hmm. Right now, people are saying have Sandheim on the left side, Gudis on the right side for the mm-hmm. defense. I would want to switch them. Yeah, that way you can have access to quick passing on the blue line right. and a great one timer from either player. Right. True. So that that's just for me personally. Mm-hmm. I always like to see a left um, defenseman on the left side, a right defenseman on the right side, because uh, also. I, you know, I I do get it that it's easier to control the puck along the boards and everything. Yeah, mm-hmm. you can use your body. You can just as easily control on your backhand as you can forehand. So I don't think it makes the biggest it's difference. Interesting the look they have on daily faceoff for the power play unit. I'm just looking at the whole line. Yeah. Like Again, it's not entirely updated yet. It's not updated, but they have wheel on the second unit. Yeah. Okay. As well as Van Riemsdyk, Patrick, Konechny, and Provorov. Yep. I would actually substitute and put, because Sanheim is more offensive, I'd put Sanheim with Provorov on the blue line. Yeah, I'd be good with that. Also, I've noticed 
this preseason in, preseason in general. I don't know if Pro Rob's trying to make this more into his game, but he cut up more. Yeah. He's come up more on like offensive plays and everything. Here's an interesting idea that Sam Carcidi, uh tweeted out. Haxtell may use uh, Yori Laterra at Yor. fourth line center against bigger physical teams and Wheel at fourth line center against speedy finesse teams. Wheel can play a power play Laterra on the PK. What do you think about that? That might be their best option at the moment. Right. Because if you do that, then you have a pretty decent fourth line with Wheel centering out Later- er, Lawton and uh, Raffle. Right. And then you kind of diminish it a little with Laterra. But that's the only kind of blemish on that fourth line. Because I do like the uh, top like six. Yeah. And if Roboyov can kind of continue what he did in preseason where he had a point per game, uh, that would go great for that third line, especially yeah. especially for Simmons, who I feel like needs to have a bounce back year. He I know he, he still put up a decent amount of goals or whatever, but not to the extent of him being able to put up 30 the past right. couple of years. E. I'm on Twitter. And I feel like yeah. Roboyov can be someone unlike... Fifula I think it'd be an interesting experiment to put Verobioff on the power play at some point or the PK just to see what yeah, it'd be like. They've tested him there during their preseason yeah, so far. which is good. Um, I'm on Twitter, and we'll get to uh, predictions in a little bit, but <laughs> again, there goes his mic. Um, NHL tweeted this out. This is the Islanders' new third jersey. It looks like the black ones that they used to have. But just blue, blue, like yeah. <laughs> Basically, oh, did you see the Whalers? Or the I did. They're the Carolina they're Hurricanes are bringing back the Whalers yeah. jerseys. And people aren't happy because they weren't really Connecticut. I mean, they moved from Connecticut. Yeah, you know, I don't care. From. I love it. It's amazing. Yeah. I do like how some of the teams for the third unis are going like throwing it back. Yeah, mm. no, I agree with that. But uh, you want to get to the. Yep. So a little backstory behind this. Um, our editor for Sports Talk Philly, Kevin Durso, sent an email out to the Sports Talk Philly, uh, at least like the, the Flyers uh, writers for Flyer Delphia for Sports Talk Philly. And uh, he's a section for a lot actually to cover. So here's all the areas that we will talk about and then uh, make our predictions. So. First things first, what is the key to the Flyers' season? I think it's the penalty kill. Because they got hurt big time last year on the penalty kill. Depth defensively and goaltending. Okay. And goaltenders to stay healthy. Yeah. That's a good point. Um, Hextel okay. to, yeah. to actually be able to use his goalies properly when yeah. he doesn't end up hurting them. So... Yeah, because uh, well, for me, uh, the PK percentage for the Flyers last year it was seventy five point seven eight percent, according to HockeyReference dot com. A league average is seventy nine point eight two percent, so they are well below the average. Yeah, hold on, let me see how that fared. Uh, yeah, in the league, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure it was like what third to bottom or something like that. Yeah, I I think it was twenty ninth, but. I think the PK definitely needs to improve. Yep, 29th. They were Joy. 29th. Well, it's both special teams because their power play was oh, yeah. back at 15. So, honestly. Which could also be explained by Simmons not having a yes. year. But I mean, JVR can help that. And yeah, no, the. Uh, and even the addition of the JVR. How do Will certainly help yeah. the power play at least. The penalty kill, we'll see what they do there. Damn. I was hoping it would tell me because <laughs> the Flyers didn't have a great. I mean, in Boston they did, but that was just right. because Boston couldn't figure out their power play. Even though they did have, they did score one goal. That was like the only game right. where the Flyers looked good on the PK. Every other game they hadn't had it. So right. So I don't know what's. Gonna happen there, defen- uh, 
I mean, that's obviously something that has to be addressed. And if it's another poor year on the defensive or PK, then you have to fire Lapierre. I agree. I, I think, think I thought he should have been gone this past this past season. year. Yeah, I do agree with you a lot on that one. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, uh, so I say the special teams. And what is your um, key to the Flyer season again? It was goaltending, goaltending and depth defensive. In depth, okay. Just your top pair of. Joseph and Provolf will be fine. Yes. It's just okay. everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, That's Sam Hamm's still a good defenseman, but if he's with the right person, that can be good to pair. Or right. Uh, okay, so next on the list, your player to watch for the season. I have a feeling that a lot of people are going to name Mikhail Vorobiev as their player to watch. Mm-hmm. <sighs> this is a tough one. What, uh, do you have yours in mind yet or not Travis yet? Sanheim. Travis Sanheim. That's a, a good full one. Full season. Full season? Last season he wasn't here. The yeah. season he was only a part of the season. <sighs> and if he can t- if he can do what he did at, in the f- with the yeah. Phantoms last year, that'd be great. Yeah. And if at some point Myers plays extremely well again in the uh, mm. f- uh, Phantoms and there's an injury, then that can help. That right. That solves my problem about that depth, defense, uh, depth defensively. There you have it. I'm really stuck because I want to pick James Van Riemsdyk because I want to see how he's more mature, more physical, mm-hmm. and a bigger body for a presence for James Van Riemsdyk returning to Philadelphia. And Patrick. And Patrick. Because Patrick's going to be playing with both of them. Yeah, and this is Patrick's first full year of being completely healthy. I want to see how that turns out too. Yeah. Um, they still need to gain some like chemistry. But they they do. Uh, but for JVR, uh, just, he's gonna make a huge difference mm-hmm. for this team. But the other player I'm kind of stuck on. Ah uh, man, no him too. Um, I'm really stuck also more between Ivan Provorov and Shane Gossespierre because Gossespierre has looked incredible during the preseason. Mm-hmm. I think. Then Norris could go to one of either Provorov or Goss's Bear this year. Provorov could have, or at least uh, if if not winning, at least being named a finalist. You could have, I could have, to- uh, I would have put Provorov on with it last year, but yeah, that's just me. Yeah, but also I want to because I say it every year, I want Provorov to have a breakout year like every <laughs> year. Cause Wait, I thought we skills. said I thought we said we weren't saying that this year. I know, but he has the skills to be a good player. And uh, can break out, and if he's with Wheel and uh, Lawton, I think. I think with that fourth line, I think they'll have solid chemistry. Mm-hmm. All right, so that's kind of like what was wrong with Couturier offensively for the longest time, is that all coaching staffs um, and everything were mm-hmm. not really putting him in the best line lines he could in order for him to produce offensively. Yeah. They saw him as, oh, he's great defensively, so let's always put him in the defensive zone. Now that he's with Giroux and Konechny, he was a hard finalist. No, not yeah. hard finalist. Uh, Selkie. Selkie. That was Giroux. That was a hard. He wasn't even a finalist. And that made me so he mad. Was there. He was there within the top ten, but yeah. yeah. Okay. You have to bring my hopes down, Jeffrey. Sorry. <laughs> Your bold part. prediction. Grady's waiting. Can we bring him in? I would love to. <laughs> All right, as your mic goes. <laughs> While you're thinking, I got to come up with a bold prediction uh, as well. I forget what I said last year. You know, I, I, I think I need to look up what I said last year as well. Um, huh? <laughs> Leave me out of this. This is uh, Norris Trophy. No, sorry. Um, uh, 
That's not entire. I got mine. Okay. What is your I bold prediction? Roboyoff will double his points from the Phantoms last year. W- how many points did he have last 29. year? 20, he had 29 last year? You think he'll double that? Close to it, maybe. Okay, so you're saying at least 40 points. That is a very bold prediction. I like it, though. He had 20 assists, so I don't know. I mean, hey. And the if way he's been put, passing. Yeah, exactly. The way can. he's been passing. Okay. Um, if he can keep his point per game, then... Okay, no. I need to find this. I got mine now. Hold on. Okay. I'm going to change it. Oh. Oh. And there goes your mic. Oh, you're, are you changing? You said you're changing your... Oh, gosh. All right, because I really want to see... Okay, my bold prediction... Oh, that's right. Okay. Oh, there goes my mic. <laughs> Dang, I hate this. This has been a this great is podcast. A, it has been. This is an interesting one because the Flyers were kind of a bubble team last year going into the season. What do you think about that? Like, like I'm saying like, like going into the season last year. Cause sure. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, Some they teams thought they'd had... They like were on the cusp of not making it, but possibly. Yes, exactly. So my bull prediction was that for last year was that the Flyers would be the first wild card team. This this year? No, from last year. Right. So what are you saying for this So year? for this year... Um, oh, wow. This is pretty cool, actually, looking at all this. Um... Uh this is tough, man. Um, for my bold prediction, I got mine. Okay, here it is. Okay, <laughs> Boyoff will be a Calder finalist. Finalist. Who? No. Oh, that's a really bold prediction. I'm loving it even more. Can we make uh, Grady a uh, <laughs> Calder finalist <laughs> for mascots? Maybe. Yes. Oh, man, I don't know. Um. I don't think that's out of this the is of possibilities either. Like this isn't that. that bold because this is more of my prediction for the entire season. I mean, it, you could argue it's bold, but I could really see this happening. Um, the Flyers finishing. Well, like, on my prediction or the Flyers where they would finish mm-hmm. second in the Metro. Not, not third or fourth, but second. Let's see where I have Behind it. either Pittsburgh or Washington. I don't know which one, but one of those teams. I think they could go for second. If not, they could be really close to first. You know what? Just for fun. I've called um, bold predictions, Jeffrey. I, I, I know. <laughs> ju- just for fun, just to be bold, Whitmer, I'm going to say the Flyers win the Metro. God, you're such a Flyers fan. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I think that's pretty bold. Mm, I haven't finished in third. But I could see him taking second. Yeah, I, I see them more taking second place than anything. You know, third wouldn't hurt either, but my I honestly bold think. prediction for the Philadelphia yeah. Flyers 2018-2019 season, the Flyers will win mm-hmm. the Metropolitan Division. Okay. Just so Metro mm-hmm. Flyers yes. for Boyoff Calder. Yes. Finalist. Those are pretty bold uh, predictions. Mine more so, but I think it has the potential to yes. do that. Okay. So this is a fun one. Uh, th- these other ones are short answers, but um, they're they're good. The Flyers, who will be the Flyers' leading scorer? Last year, I said Jake Voracek. Uh, I actually, and this is also what uh, stuff I want to check out. Last year, I said Jake Voracek, and I said he would end up with 72 points. I was dead wrong. <laughs> As Claude Giroux had 102 points. Sorry, Giroux. I, I uh, didn't mean to doubt you like that. Why do you doubt him? Voracek at 85, so he exceeded what I expected him uh, to get. Mm-hmm. All right, let's see here. Who do you have as your leading scorer for the Philadelphia Flyers? Giroux or Couturier. It's more likely to be Giroux. Yeah. I think he will probably 
be close to another 100 years, possibly. Couturier, I think he could... I'm going to say 95 points for I the think captain. I he can put it up to 80 points. He I, I like... six last year. I li- I'm going to say 80. Coots gets the 18-point mark. And I think... Jurio, I'm saying 95. Uh, there it is. <laughs> Connecting at 47 points, I think you can easily get 70. Oh, you know what? All right, I might possibly change my bold projection. Um, I might say Connecting gets 60 points this year. Okay. I, I, sound, I, I think put 47 sounds about bold. But. Well, you know what? Whatever, you're <laughs> ruining my fun. I don't know what I want my prediction is. <sighs> you're the worst. I need it. I, Thank you. I hate you. Thank you. Uh, all right, moving on. Most goals for a Flyers defenseman and how many? Last year, I said Shane Goss' bear for 12. He 13. I was one off. That's that's pretty good. But Pro Ruff had 17. You know what? Get out of here. Ended up being, what, tied or something for leading goals of de- among defensemen, I think? I think you're right. All right, I'm. I'm gonna. I'm. I think, I'm, be, I I'm think going it's gonna be another close one between them, but I think I could see Prorov going. Both of them uh, going twenty goals. I can see that, especially if you see how aggressive Prorov has been in the offense. No, that but with these two playing together. If you put this whole unit together, yeah. Yeah. Even if you put them with the second unit too, they could still produce. Ah, uh, man, that's that's a tough one. All right. Uh, here's an interesting one. Number of Flyers with double-digit goals. So, for uh, for last year, I'll go over the stats for how many were in double digits. A lot of them, actually. So, you had Giroux, Couturier, Konechny, Simmons, Voracek, Provorov, Ghost, Patrick, Raffle, 16. Fipula, Lawton. Thank you. I just wanted to read all the names. So, 16 last year. So uh, looking at all the names on this year's roster, how so uh, there's 16 last year. How many this year? 18. 18. Okay, so I'm I saying Limblom could get double digits. Okay, I'm saying Katori, Drew, Konechny, Law, and I'll give uh, Limblom, Patrick, Raffle, Simmons, JVR for sure, Voracek, Ruboyev, Reader, that Reed. Get off my podcast. <laughs> um, yeah. Ghost. I, I'm going to say Haig's going to be up there in double digits. He could, he could be. If he's like with Sienheimer. Yeah. Something. Uh, I said 18? Yeah. I'm going to be that guy. I'm saying 19. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> um, leader in... Power play goals. Last year, Simmons led with 11. I'm saying JVR. Oh, just Simmons. That's where he, his specialty is. Yeah. That's where all his point production comes from, essentially, is the power play. So, Oh, boy. Flyers final penalty kill ranking. 25th. The you know what the weird thing is? I was exactly thinking the same thing. 24th, then. Darn you. All right. F- total shootout losses for the Flyers. Five. Uh, Five. I want to see their stats from last year. No, I just I want the team, not the... Pl- <laughs> uh, let's see here. Looking at stats and everything here. Um, all right, here we go. For the Flyers, they it doesn't say. That's awesome. Where'd you, where'd you check for the, the penalty kill? <laughs> that was a team thing. If you go to oh, the, reg- stats you go to and the regular like yeah, stats, stats by team. There, so ah, there it is. Okay. Regular season. Mine's being dumb. I have one. That's not even on here. How many one goal wins or losses? 
Losses by a goal. Or losses by a goal. Losses, it, losses or wins by a goal. This has been a lot of them. Like at least 13. Yeah. I'll, go, I'll say 15. But anyway. Um, I'd say 20. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm looking at the... Because uh, what I said last year for the penalty kill, oh boy, again way off. I just said 16th. That's hilarious. Um, I'll I'll we'll give them. I'll be nice to them. I'll say. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, the the uh, shootout losses. Last year I said six. How many total shootout losses did the Flyers have last year? I don't know shootout, but oh, but so how, how how many overtime losses did they have? All right, I'll say eight at least. Eight shootout. Um, yeah, eight shootout losses. While you're looking that up, here's a really fun one: date of Carter Hart's call up. I'm saying February. Um, February what though? Twelfth, sure. Next uh, season. Next season? That's when they give them the whole year. Unless there's, like, they're both hurt. But yeah. Like last season. Right. I think. And if he's playing really well in the Phantoms, then I think so. But I feel like they kind of want to give him a year. They had 14 overtime losses last season. 14? 14. At, uh, I heard you. I was just saying it. It's the most in the NHL last year. Yeah. Wow. Um. Oh wait, here there's a there were two and seven in shootouts. So they had nine shootouts. Interesting. Believe it or not, they ha- did not have a winning record in the shootout. Oh I no know way! It's surprising. It's extremely. All right. Um, we already mentioned Carter Hart. Mm-hmm. Uh, where, where will the Flyers end we up? kind of also talked about that. Yes. Um, your bold prediction was. Well, I don't know what my bold prediction now is anymore because you're ruining it. I'm having fun with it. I know you are. Um, I'll get back to that. But So I- if I don't make my bold prediction of them winning the Metro, I'll say second place. Yeah. Are, are you saying second? I said third, but I could see him taking okay. second. All right, here's a great one. NHL predictions for the rest of the league. First of all, Atlantic Division winner. Go. Atlantic Division? Yes. I have the Tampa Bay Lightning. This is so tough. I want Tampa Bay to win, but I want oh, I think Toronto has up hand as well. It's going to be very close between Toronto and Tampa Bay. You know what? No, Tampa Bay is too good defensively. And the Maple Leafs have no defense. Yeah, but they do. John Tavares. That's <laughs> it's the offense. Hey, he can play defense too. All right, That's Metropolitan. True. Capitals. This is the worst. This is the worst. <laughs> <laughs> You're the best. I love The Office. I miss that show. Uh, Central Division winner. Ah, oh, this is tough. Winnipeg Jets. I agree. Even though I feel like it's going to be another close one between them and mm-hmm. the Pir- Pacific. San Jose. Dang you. Eastern Conference champion. I was so close last year, as I said, the Tampa Bay Lightning. They're a game away. Yeah, I have to say Tampa Bay. Like, it's. I want to say Tampa Bay. I, I'm not going to pick them this year. They frustrate me because they're so, so close. 
the past few seasons of winning the cup or at least advancing into the cup mm-hmm. and they don't get it done. I don't understand how or why with that I team. Was between maybe possibly Toronto. That's but what I was thinking. just because of the offense. Yes. Because I'm assuming <sighs> if they go up, like, go up against like Boston or something, right. they possibly will lose again. Boston was so good last year. That's so shocking. They ended the season really strong. Yeah, they did. But I'm just thrilled that Tampa took them down. Yeah. The Eastern Conference champion. Oh, boy. If you go by the past couple of years, you'd say a Metro team, but I don't know. Yeah, right. Realistically, the only teams that I see being the Eastern Conference champion is between down to five possible teams. And they are? Pittsburgh, Toronto, Washington, Boston, or Tampa. I don't think Pittsburgh. Okay. I'm fine with that. <laughs> all right, so I'll... I think I'll Washington possibly, but I feel you like... You know what? I'll, I'll have fun with this one. I'm saying Toronto. Maple Leafs? Yes. They're blue and have a Luke on your logo. <laughs> and they play in Toronto. Yes, they do. Hockey. Okay. But anyway, <laughs> Western Conference. Who's your champion? I need an answer. I don't want to go number one, number one, but thing in Winnipeg. Yeah, but I don't want to. I think that'd be great to have two powerhouse teams like that. I mean, it was very close to being that. I thought it was going to be that. Right. Wait, did you ever decide who's your East champion? Did you say Washington? I said Tampa Bay. Tam- Sorry, you did say Tampa. That's right. Sharks got better. Vegas got better. Nashville's Nashville. Nashville is Nashville. That's right. Smashville. Man, this is tough. I am going to go on a crazy jump here. San Jose. Okay. So it's San Jose against Toronto for my Stanley Cup Finals. And the winner of the 2019 Stanley Cup champion, Chip... Yeah, I'm going to go Winnipeg and... Winnipeg and uh, Tampa Bay. All right. So between San Jose and Toronto, for me, I am picking... Oh, boy. Mike Whitmer. <laughs> I'll pick... Are you sh- skipping a turn? Yeah, right. <laughs> Pass. <laughs> I'm picking the San Jose Sharks as my Stanley Cup champion. Nah. Like, it feels so weird saying that. Because... San Jose has never lived up to the hype I in the know, playoffs. They were they lost to Pittsburgh. Yes. Lost the Cup. Yes. But I don't want to I talk. think the addition of Carlson that's that going to help trip. tremendously. Right. And the fact that he's finally in a place where he is going to be much more appreciated yeah. and will actually enjoy playing with so especially someone like Brent Burns or Mark Edward Vlasic. That's going to make the biggest difference in the world. I think San Jose will have I feel like the hand. West is the biggest toss up of what it could be. Right. And by that I mean mostly the central. Yeah. Um, um who's your Stanley Cup champion? Tampa Bay probably. Okay. Okay. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why not? <laughs> no, Winnipeg. I've changed my mind. Okay, your art. Uh, are you ready? Connor art David. Yes, Art Ross. I have him as well. I actually had Austin Matthews last year. I was not really close. Um, your MVP for the Heart candidate should have been Claude Giroux. Yes, I agree. John Tavares. Ooh. Look at you. 
Mr. John Tavares. Man. Um... Last year, I actually said Connor McDavid um, led the league with 108 points. <clears throat> I think it will certainly help having Tavares in Toronto. Yeah, I kind of agree with you on that one. I the think heart, Tavares yeah. is going to play with an extra, like basically like a boulder mm-hmm. on his shoulder. Especially having uh, Austin Matthews on the line with him, that's going to help. Who won it last year? Was that Hall? Or yes, Taylor Hall. Okay, I don't see Hall repeating no. this year. Possibly finalist again. Gotta see. Uh, here's a tough one. Vesna. My pick is Andre Vasilevsky. I was going to say it, but because you said I'm not going to say him anymore. <laughs> Pavlik. No, not Pavlik. What's his he name? retired. Yeah, he did. Sorry. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> he could, too. I mean, why not? Yeah, right. I think Hellebuck could. He was a finalist last year. True. So, Sam Vasilevsky. Mm-hmm. And if we go by what my prediction is, it makes sense. I'll probably want to lose. Yeah. It's a very good idea. Jack Adams for the Coach of the Year. Uh, I guess see... Didn't yeah, Barry Trotz win last year? I think so. No, I'm sorry. Gerard Gallant for Vegas, of course. <laughs> That's so cracks me up that uh, John Tortorella won it for Columbus in 2017. Ooh, this is going to be tough. Um, Paul Maurice of Winnipeg. Ooh, Paul Maurice of Winnipeg. Nice. Usually goes to whoever wants to stand the cup and they have Winnipeg winning it. So. Yeah. That, that is a good point. I mean, Vegas, you couldn't take anything from them last year. Oh, season, uh, for so sure. Really time to come to a close. Oh, man. That's so I'm weird. Mm. Andrew Ranta was second in the Rules of Dance last season. All right. I said this last year didn't happen. I'm saying it again, especially with Dave Haxtell, <laughs> uh, John Devaris in Toronto, Dave Mike Haxtell. Babcock, Dave Haxtell, Dave Haxtell. Yeah. No, it's Dave John Haxtell. Stevens. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, Craig Verby. All right, here's a bit of a bold prediction. Who's your Norse def- uh, Trophy winner? I'm saying Ivan Provorov. Very bold prediction. You know, th- that'll be my prediction. My bold prediction. Carlson. Ah, there you go. I think Provo can be in the finalist, but that's a good call. Yeah. Or Drew Doughty, because they're like, he wants it like every year. He's so good. All right. I don't know if a boy off's going to win it, but I think <laughs> he'll be a uh, finalist for yeah. th- the Calder. But because I like a boy off, I'm going to save a boy off. Okay. Yeah. Well, that that is your bold prediction anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Ooh, uh, I want to just look up who are some. Oh, <laughs> duh. Uh, Rasmus Dahlin. Fuck you. <laughs> was that the last pick? Yeah, that was. Cool. So that is that. Mm-hmm. So we got a good bearing on this. <laughs> yeah, just a bit. But yeah. uh, so season. far in review, uh, the main things we'll point out are bold predictions. Uh, we have great mics. Yes. <laughs> uh, Ivan <laughs> Provarov oh, won the Norris yeah. Trophy for me, for you, Mike. See. Is uh, Mikhail well, Vorobiev yeah, yeah, yeah. will win the um, Calder Trophy for yeah. the Rookie of the Year. My player to watch is also Ivan Provorov. Your player to watch. <laughs> did I say this? <laughs> he did. Oh, yeah, no, Patrick. He, yeah, uh, it was Patrick. Okay. Yeah. Um, the key to the fire season for me is the special teams with the power play and the penalty kill. But more Depth defenseman, yep. goaltending for me. And then the uh, division winners, Tampa Bay, Washington, Winnipeg, and San Jose for me and for you. You had Tampa, Tampa Bay, Bay, Winnipeg, San Jose, and Washington. Okay, so exact same. Nice. My Eastern Conference champion, the Toronto Maple Leafs, Western Conference champion, the San Jose Sharks, and the Sharks of San Jose will take the Stanley Cup this year in my other bold prediction. I had the Lightning in the East <laughs> and the Winnipeg in the West, and Winnipeg wins it all because, yeah. Because, yeah, I love it. Perfect. Well, there you have it. Yeah. <laughs> this has been a great podcast. Has been. As uh, we can see that our uh-huh. mics uh, do not like us very much. Mm-hmm. But uh, do you know the best part is I guarantee Hockey's you. Back? Well, hockey's back. I'm glad you You're said that. You're wearing a Flyers hat. You look very Flyers-esque. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, but the Flyers... Don't have uh, Michael Neuver on the IR just yet, as mm-hmm. Dave Isaac mentioned 26 minutes ago on Twitter. They likely will, though. Ron Hextel said yesterday the Flyers will take an extra forward, forward with them to Vegas. That's something to keep in mind. Okay, so that's why both of them went with them to Colorado. Yeah. That makes sense now. All right. So and to kind of wrap everything else up, we did uh, predictions. We talked about uh, Wilson, Flyers cuts. Small yep. trade, great microphones. <laughs> um, yeah, but I think uh, I think we'll end it there. Yep. <laughs>